to introduce uh, Miguel Esteban, who's going to be speaking to us uh, again about early embryogenesis. And I know Miguel is going to be showing us some wonderful data from early monkey and human embryos. Uh, Miguel is a Spanish physician. He's a Spanish physician scientist based in China. He's a professor at the Chinese Academy of Science and head of the Laboratory of Integrative Biology at Gangzhou Institutes of Biomedicine and Health. Uh, Miguel, please share your screen. One second. Under presenter mode. Okay. Perfect. Looks good. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Christine and uh, Fucho, for the introduction. I would also like to thank all, all the co organizers of this HCA Asia meeting, in particular, uh, Goji and Joshi, uh, but also all the rest, because uh, I know uh, doing, making this happen hasn't been easy, and so far is, uh, is fantastic. The talks, the quality of the talks are really good. Uh, so I'm going, I'm going to be talking today uh, of some of the directions that uh, we are taking uh, in terms of uh, studying profiling at the single cell development with uh, my colleagues at the China National Gene Bank in Shenzhen. Okay. Uh, this work is also uh, being done in the context of the uh, single cell consortium uh, that we created uh, last year. And this consortium is based uh, in the Great Bay area around uh, Shenzhen and all the major cities around but uh, is aiming to interact with, with uh, the rest of China and, and the whole world. Uh, one of the first studies that we have completed is the single cell transcriptome landscape of a non-human primate, which is uh, some of the work that uh, Liu Longqi uh, explained this uh, morning. And in this data set, we have included so far over 1 million single cells. And uh, I have to say that uh, this is a healthy monkey, but we are moving now on to uh, doing exactly the same thing for a panel of diseases uh, that try to mimic the same diseases in human. Um, it's quite remarkable that uh, despite, uh, in some cases, not big difference in the genome sequence, uh, sequence between species, for example, the monkey and the human, uh, the rat and the monkey, uh, and even with the worm, despite these, uh, in some cases, modest sequence, uh, differences, uh, the ultimate result of development is so different. We look so different. We uh, have uh, so different organs uh, and um, we, we, we live uh, very in, in very different ways and, and in some cases, very short time in some others, much longer. So this raises very many fundamental questions such as, um, how many genes are responsible for these changes? Are these genes involved mainly in the early stages of development or at every crossroad of making self-trade decisions? We have genes that determine uh, these, uh, these uh, differences. Is, and is all related about the speed of the changes or is a, a more comprehensive type of uh, variation? Um, indeed, uh, these changes, uh, these differences between species happen very early. For example, the time of zygote activation, the time in which uh, the, 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 the zygote genes become uh, active and we, uh, the, it depends less on, on the maternal transcripts. Uh, in mouse is around the two cell stage, while in primates is around the eight cell stage. And this, this probably tells us something that uh, a part of gene variation is also something related to the speed at which things are happening and that creates later a domino effect. So, but uh, although there's still many unknowns, there's a good number of studies trying to characterize uh, very early development at the single cell level, including uh, seminal uh, work from uh, Tan Fu Cho and, and others. Um, one of uh, our colleagues at the China National Gene Bank, uh, Liu Longqi and, and others like uh, uh, Shane and uh, Xu Xun, uh, they uh, developed this technology, CAT-seq, 
couple of years ago uh, that they apply also to study uh, the very early embryo. And uh, is, uh, this technique was originally ba uh, based on the SMART-SIG2 uh, and allows uh, single cell RNA sequencing and single cell attack sequencing to study uh, regulatory uh, networks uh, in the early embryo or in other cell types. Uh, regarding uh, fetal organogenesis, this is still a, number, a good number of studies, but uh, the, the, uh, the lack of knowledge is, is more, more obvious because there are many different stages. And uh, as the embryo grows, there are many more cells, the number of cells is bigger. So uh, there's many, many uh, unknowns. What we want to do at the China National Gene Bank, together with collaborators from China and collaborators from all over the world, is we want to focus on organogenesis, on different stages of organogenesis, such as the uh, appearance of hemopoiesis, uh, different stages of liver development, heart, gastrointestinal development, and other important uh, events. And we want to look for the developmental match, the time that matches in different species. And we want to profile these at the single cell level. Level. But importantly, we don't just want to use uh, single, classical single cell RNA sequencing or a, a single cell attack or even multiomics. We want to do this uh, at a, in three dimensions. We want to use a spatial uh, transcriptomic technologies to, to, to achieve this. And we want to uh, go all over these different species, uh, the mouse, the rat, the rabbit, sheep, cow, monkey, and then as far as we can uh, get in in, in human, uh, we think that by, by comparing all these species, uh, we will be able to know more about what makes us different in many uh, ways and uh, what makes the different species live longer and then how we can um, translate these differences into the different diseases that different animals develop and then um, potentially uh, uh, using this knowledge for regeneration, in vivo regeneration. So um, in the case of the monkey, uh, we are planning to study not just uh, one type of species, but different, such as the marmoset, uh, the uh, synomologous and the rhesus, because uh, among these different uh, non-human primate species, the differences are remarkable. Uh, in addition to the studies with uh, uh, in vivo samples. Uh, uh, so we uh, are planning to study embryonic stem cells from different species. We're working with a network of collaborators that have been generating uh, uh, embryonic stem cells coming from the blastocysts, like uh, Christine was explaining, uh, from different species, including uh, new recipes that make them be closer to the um, to the inner cell mass of the embryo or even earlier. And then uh, we are planning to study how these embryonic stem cells from all these species differentiate into uh, multiple lineages in two dimensions or in three dimensions uh, as organoids, cat organoids, brain organoids, and so on. Uh, and how are we going to do this? Well, obviously, we're not going to do this alone because it's a monumental uh, uh, work, and um, we're going to do this with a, a whole network of collaborators from China and from the rest of the world, and we're going to be applying uh, unique technologies, um, including these that I'm going to introduce now. Uh, so one technology that we are very proud of is the uh, DNA B-Lab uh, C4, which is a droplet-based single cell RNA sequen uh, sequencing uh, technology that is very simple, works through a very basic, uh, basic uh, physical principle, which is negative pressure, and it makes things very affordable and allows us to do uh, everything in large scale and very quickly. Uh, we have also a variation of this uh, C4 uh, approach for uh, attack sequencing, and the same for the uh, multiomics combine uh, single cell RNA sequencing and attack sequencing that we are scaling up to 80,000 uh, cells in, in a row. Uh, but perhaps the most revolutionary technology that we have generated is especially uh, resolved transcriptomics. Uh, so uh, this is uh, a, a very uh, simple demonstration of how the C4 works. It takes very little time and uh, it works really fantastic. And this paper on the left is one of the first manuscripts that have been accept accepted using uh, this technology.
Okay. Uh, in addition uh, to the uh, single cell RNA sequencing, we have the CAT seq uh, high throughput, which I just mentioned, which uh, now it doesn't use the smart seq, it's, based, it's a droplet based uh, technology. And uh, we, all, we have also generated a new technology uh, based uh, on, uh, on, on, the same, uh, on the same approach for nascent RNA sequencing, and we use 4SU labeling. And this technique is going to be particularly useful for understanding all these cell transitions in vitro, the ES cell differentiation into the different uh, lineages, uh, so that we can see uh, real transition patterns rather than pseudo trajectories. Now, uh, uh, the, the most, uh, like I mentioned, the most rev revolutionary technology that we have developed, this has been uh, created uh, by uh, the group of uh, Cheng Ao, Chris Cheng, in, in, in our large team. And uh, uh, we call it stereomics uh, because it can profile, uh, uh, it can do single cell transcriptomics in multiple layers. And with all this, we aim to reconstruct reconstruct uh, transcriptional patterns in three dimension in multiple organisms. But in pre uh, we, we, we are gonna be focusing this now uh, for developing, for development. So the principle is very simple. We pattern a chip with nanoballs and these nanoballs uh, have uh, uh, barcodes. Uh, and then uh, with this, we create a special coordinates and then we manipulate the tissue. We put a tissue slides, a slide, a slice on, 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 on the chip. We can take images of this tissue. We can do all the type of processing of the tissue. And then uh, through chemical reactions, we sequence it. And then um, we, we do all the, all the calculations using algorithms. Uh, these are some technical specifications of our technology. This is the number of transcripts that we can capture per bit, and this is the uh, olfactory bulb and then three different replicates with uh, uh, indicating the number of transcripts that have been captured in different areas. These, uh, these other panels indicate here uh, the correlation and uh, between the different between the different replicates and the statistics in terms of uh, 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 genes and, and things. Okay. Um, this, uh, this is the special expression pattern of three uh, of the three samples for genes such as APOE, PCP4, uh, UCHL1, and uh, we are comparing with the uh, with the uh, Allen Institute Brain Atlas, and we see a remarkable similarity uh, with uh, with these uh, data set, very valuable data set. Um, we uh, also assign uh, special coordinates to a specific cell types, and we can see here on the left the different clusters that we have seen with the olfactory bulb, and this is the distribution of the specific genes in these different areas of the, uh, of the sequence uh, tissue. Um, that was the olfactory uh, bulb that is a small, uh, smaller uh, part of tissue, but this is a whole brain of the mouse. And uh, as you can see, the number of genes that we can capture per uh, a bean size of 100 micrometers is uh, quite large. And we still think that we can optimize this even further. And this is a longitudinal section and we have uh, for, for a series of oligodendrocyte markers. And we can see that they are distributed ar ar around the corpus callosum and then there is very good overlap between the three markers that represent the oligodendrocytes. This is done with the S1 version of this uh, spatial technology uh, that matches well with the size of the uh, mouse brain, but we also have chips for doing it with monkey tissue, the S6 version, and the S13, uh, which indicates uh, 13 centimeters, that can do with a human tissue. Why this is important? This is important. This is very important because it will eliminate uh, much batch to batch variation between handling all these uh, different samples. And then we would be able to, to, for example, have a brain of a patient with a neurodegenerative disease and see how the different gradients move from one part of the brain to another. And this would be not just with one slide, but with multiple slides taken in different directions. And then altogether, we could determine how the disease has been spreading. And, uh, and, and so on. Okay. And so uh, in summary, our new special uh, transcriptomic technology, our stereomics technology has a very high resolution, 
a very high sensitivity, so 7,500 7, uh, 7, uh, genes uh, per bin or 100 micrometers. And uh, uh, because, and, and, uh, and also I forgot to mention before uh, that our technology doesn't go only at the single cell level, actually it goes subcellular because we have uh, uh, 400 bits that, can, uh, that correspond to a single cell. And then uh, this indicates that in the, in, in, in the near future, we're gonna be looking actually at uh, uh, parameters, not just transcriptomic uh, globally of a single cell, but also where these transcripts are distributed. And this could be very important in the case of the brain for uh, where the, um, the, MR, the mRNAs are distributed in axons and, and, and so on. And uh, our technology also has a very high scalability. scalability and uh, I've been exp explaining the three different versions that we have so far as well S6 and S13 that we can uh, uh, reach up to a whole uh, human brain size. Uh, so uh, with this stereomics technology, we are going to be launching very soon an international initiative for a collaboration with uh, everybody uh, that is interested from all over the world. And uh, we are going to be applying this to development, like I've been explaining today, but actually to also other fields such as cancer. And we already have a series of extremely promising results uh, that are very innovative. And if uh, anybody is interested, interested, please drop us an email and uh, you can see here the, uh, the address. So finally, I would like to say thanks to all my colleagues at the China National Gene Bank. Uh, Xu Xun, uh, Ho Yong, uh, in particular uh, Chen Ao, Chris Chen, who is uh, the leading is leading the whole team of Stereomics. Of course, Liu Longqi, uh, Xi Ping. This is a team of uh, uh, Chen Ao, and uh, these are some of uh, my colleagues working uh, together with me and Longqi uh, on the. Um, Macaca Atlas. And I would also like to thank all other members of our single cell consortium. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Miguel, for a really fascinating and exciting talk. Can I ask you to stop sharing your screen, please? Yeah. So I, I'd like to start by asking a question. Um, just about how you're going to handle the scale of data that you'll be generating with such an ambitious project. How okay. will you integrate that together and, and share it? Okay, uh, so uh, that's a very good question. So the China National Gene Bank has an amazing capacity for storing all those, uh, all those data. Um, as time passes, these capacities are being renewed, and I think uh, we're going to see a lot of innovation in terms of clouds uh, in, in, in the coming one or two years. But uh, basically, we can handle everything, and then uh, depending on what type of samples, we can provide people uh, an access to the uh, China National Gene Bank, or we can share the data so people can email us, can talk to us, and we can find ways to work together and make everybody um, uh, happy and, and enjoy what we're doing together. Fantastic. Can I ask you one question about the data you've generated so far across different species mm -hmm. brains? Are you seeing differences in regions of high stem cell proliferation, such as the olfactory bulb or the um, hippocampus? Okay, so uh... As you can imagine, the amount of information that we can generate with the spatial technologies uh, is tremendous. So uh, we'll, we will interpret as much as we can in the first instance of all these uh, uh, studies, but we would like that uh, the rest of the world takes on, on continuing digging up information from there. So we haven't looked too much into, into the hypo, uh, hypocampus uh, so far, but I can tell you that in terms, like Longchi actually mentioned, in terms of the um, uh, uh, connective cells of the brain, which are the astrocytes and the uh, glia and so on, we are seeing remarkable differences between the three species. And uh, in, in the manuscript that we are preparing of the monkey atlas, we're gonna explain some of those. And we think that this is very relevant in terms of 
um, why some diseases are really only human. And when you try to induce Parkinson's disease in a mouse, it doesn't work. And in a monkey, well, unless you destroy the substantia nigra with drugs and things, you know, it may not work the same way too. And uh, I think this is a fascinating, but immense territory for exploration that, you know, mm. All, all over the world with our data sets and data sets from all, all, all other people, you know, we, we're going to have a lot of fun exploring. Really exciting work. Thank you. I have one question from um, Ram Dasgupta, Dasgupta, who's asking, um, how does the stereomics platform perform on other tissues such as liver or colon where we know it's, you get noisy data from other spatial technologies? Um, well, um, we haven't tested the technology on absolutely every tissue yet, okay? But I can tell you that when we try it on cancer, that is a complicated tissue also to uh, profile at the spatial level, it works extremely well. So we think that uh, every tissue will have some kind of, you know, caveat in terms of how you need to be, develop the algorithms, how you need to cut the sections, blah, blah, blah but we don't think we're gonna have any problem with any kind of tissue. And if we have it, we will try to solve it. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Miguel, for a fantastic talk. Thank you.